Good morning. Oh, are you trying to jump in my cup of coffee? Look at these beautiful little chicks. They're about three and a half weeks old now. There's our rooster, Bird Rock. Bird Rock, we found a home for you, little buddy. Welcome to Eat Your Backyard. The first ever Saturday morning coffee chat. Might start doing these. It makes sense. What a beautiful morning. Now these hens are little composting, fertilizing machines that just wander everywhere and enrich. They also consume almost everything, all the bugs. They've already found their favorite spots, which is kind of cool. Now that mulberry tree over there in the corner where I'm pointing the camera is a favorite. It drops a lot of mulberries. Chickens love mulberries. Uh, they really like the red beets that I was growing and they're over there in the corner. And of course bugs. I mean they're just voracious with the bugs. Those mangoes are so low now they're so getting so heavy that they're almost hitting the ground and that's surprising to me because i keep these trees trimmed up pretty high but this year due to the all the changes i made you can check out the videos if you're, if you're into growing stuff see how i done it but uh it's basically just lots of uh manure being produced by my bunnies and now my chickens Lots of worm tea being produced by my little worm farm. Uh, composting, simple composting capability. And I uh, filled in the blanks with watering, consistent watering, real careful attention to that. And then the micronutrients, which I have not actually pulled the trigger on that yet, but I've got to add that around the yard. Maybe I'll do some of that this morning. Sun's coming over, coming home from college for the weekend. We're going to go out and do some fishing. Super stoked about that. And all things tie together, right? So the output of these fishing trips could be some fish waste that we can bury around the trees. Now the pigeon pea over in the corner, we've realized that we just started growing these. I grew them in pots. I grew them, uh, have now shaped some of them to be a bush, some of them to be a tree form type growth. But pigeon peas, we're just really committed to those. And what everybody says is once you have pigeon peas, you never don't have pigeon peas. And I'm stoked on that. Uh, the bunnies have been eating the pigeon pea leaves. Bunnies seem to love pigeon peas. Pigeon pea leaves and stems. which is really cool. And of course, once it starts to fruit, the pigeon pea will be great fodder for the uh, all the animals. I haven't gone over to see the little lionhead bunnies yet. Maybe we'll go do that. It's always part of the day. It's too, first part of the day is to head out there and greet the bunnies, let them out, let them run around. I'm at the point now with the female bunny, it's getting so tame and it's so not flighty from us, <clears throat> which rabbits are typically real, you know, wild kind of critters and that, that they, I think they tame kind of slowly and you have to stay up with the constant work with them to keep them, you know, relaxed around you. But um, Penelope, our little female lionhead bunny, though our white bunny, is... 
pretty cool personality and pretty mellow bunny and that is she doesn't run away from us so i think we might try to let that bunny out into the larger yard which would be really cool i'd love to be able to to let all the animals kind of run around and do their thing i have to admit i've grown very attached to this uh little barred rock rooster <laughs> even though he does bite <laughs> but he charges other birds that are around here. He's very much the, you know, already, like seems like a protector of the flock. I'd love to have him out here with these hens moving forward, but I just can't keep him because it's outside of the code in my city. And I wouldn't, I'm not, I wouldn't do that to my neighbors. I live way too close to them for that to be cool. So just giving them the best life while he's here and enjoying them. I'll be able to look back on these videos, <laughs> which would be fun. I was thinking about a uh, my childhood, and you know, I grew up on a farm, and eh, I'd say 100 acres, 200 acres, not a large farm, small farm, but uh, my grandfather—it was my grandfather's farm, but we lived right next to him. We actually. My mother actually built uh, a house on top of a two-acre tomato field right next door to his house. <laughs> and uh, I actually had six aunts and uncles to the left of me and four aunts and uncles to the right of me. And outside of them was all farm territory. So all just fields, fields of corn, wheat, soybeans, tomatoes, asparagus, peppers, I mean, just on, on, on. Also small orchard of fruit trees. So this is where I got my, you know, my attraction to doing this kind of stuff in my yard is it just, I was always interested in it and always had a deep connection with wandering around in the fields and eating the fresh vegetables. I love vegetables. I love to eat raw vegetables. Yeah, and we also had, in a, besides a number of fruit trees, peach trees, apple trees, gooseberries, raspberries, blackberries. I mean, the list just goes on and on what my grandfather planted there. And uh, also we had animals, you know, over the years, sheep, goats, chickens, that kind of thing. So the chickens he had when I was so young, I don't really remember them, but uh, I remember the goats and he actually got me a pet goat, which I named Billy the goat. <laughs> And that was a great goat. I spent a lot of time with that goat. And uh, goats are fun. They're bizarre. The sounds they make, the way they look at you, it, it just draws you in, certainly. If you have pet goats or you have goats, you know what I'm talking about. They're strange animals and fun. And of course, produce manure a lot like the bunnies, right? So they're also manure producing machines for sure. But uh, what the long, the story, the long story short on that is that one day I came home and I said, went out to see Billy after school and I said, where's Billy? And my grandfather said, well, I gave Billy away. And that was pretty impactful to me because I kind of wanted Billy to be around, but he said, yeah, I gave it to our relatives uh, out in Westchester and they're going to eat him. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was uh, shocking to me. Certainly, I was probably about eight years old, maybe. But I really appreciate the way that happened now looking back. As I look at these chicks and so on and so forth, it's funny how your current moment can give you a lens and perspective into your past that's always good. I do have a bag of mealworms here. <laughs> These chickens actually flew up on my lap earlier and one of them got me. So I'm going to 
go deal with that before I started the live stream. <laughs> See if I can get him to come over. Hey, chick, chick. Come on, chick, chick. Come on, chick, chick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Good, chick, chick. Look at that. Three weeks old, they are trained at that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here you go. Here. Give you some more. Yeah, and all I'm feeding them are these uh, dried mealworms. You can see I nailed my thumb, making a chicken coop. Go! <laughs> You would like more? That's Blondie. We've named our pet chickens. Yeah, they're really cool looking little birds. You have to remember though, they're still little babies. They get big fast because they're hybrid chickens, meaning they're dual purpose. They're good for eggs and for meat. And they are getting meaty. But they still have little tiny baby chicken brains, so. And you just work with them over time for sure. Any animal, I just say. You work with them patiently over time. Like these chickens, and you know, they they fit right into your life, like a dog or a cat or anything else. And it turns out, I, I have a sneaking suspicion we have had a relationship with ground fowl for quite some time as human beings. And like dogs, you know, we have these symbiotic relationships with these creatures. And if you take them out of the loop, by the way, I think we become somewhat um, nervous, almost. Like we're not complete system. And that's more or less one of the core things of permaculture, right? Is systems within systems that all serve and enable the others so you get more or less a closed loop of uh, a closed loop in your system a system directly intended to serve you look at that little rooster he's <laughs> he's a leader he was a runt. He was so small when we got him. They actually got what's called pasty butt from all three of these barred rocks, which is when, by the way, if you get baby chicks, you got to watch for that. Um, what happens is their little vent hole gets kind of clogged up and you have to clean it out or they die. Is the long story short on that. Do we get to harvest iguana? I'm pretty sure you could harvest an iguana. Yeah, if you saw one running around. I mean, I, they're non-native. Uh, in Florida. So, yeah, like, I think, um, you know, also pythons and things like that. Uh, lionfish. Another one. These are generally, like, you know, considered to be nuisance creatures. Yeah, do they come for the mangoes? Do the chickens come for the mangoes? No, they haven't yet. Uh, but these mangoes aren't ripe. But they might come for mangoes, or just answering the comment. Yeah, the chickens seem to be very interested in what's on the ground in terms of bugs and, and vegetables and that kind of stuff. They've pretty much already nailed my carrot patch I was gonna put chicken wire around it and just didn't follow through on that but then I figured out ah, well you know why did I grow the carrot patch anyway and it really was mostly to feed to the rabbits although we've eaten some carrots too 
Yeah, maybe we'll go pick a carrot. By the way, on, on this live stream, if there's anything you're interested in, I can go around and check it out. Okay, that's cool. Wow, that sounds... Man, what you just described sounds so cool. Going and harvesting iguana with an air rifle. Yeah, and then to eat them too. It all sounds cool. Wow. Yeah, I was watching a video actually. I don't remember the guy's channel, but I've got to find it again because I found it to be so cool. And he had uh, free range chickens, uh, both female and male, and the roosters were out on this kind of like gently sloping hills. And he would, har he would harvest the roosters um, with his air rifle. And he had it so that the scope was, it was like a, you know, really clear image through the scope as he shot each rooster and it just seemed to me to be the a super fun and humane way to to harvest those things yeah they're living out on the range got their eye on a sweet hen next thing you know lights out wouldn't we all like that as opposed to some of the other scenarios maybe we've witnessed of depravity and decrepit decline. Look at this pigeon pee. We're on the move. Coffee's kicking in. Go Bucks. It's the pigeon pee. And uh, I got, by the way, oh, <laughs> I wish I had my pocket. I got an Equinox um, knife. I should put a link in this video. I never remember to update the things. But uh, Equinox, you know, they're the ones that make like the Swiss Army knives. And I've had tons of those. And they're always so sharp and they don't really rust easily. So unlike the crappy knives I get at Walmart or whatever occasionally, which always break and get rusty immediately and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm buying the cheapest one, so it's not like I'm complaining. But uh, anyway, the Equinox has always been a great knife. We're getting into pruning now. We're gonna, Not pruning, sorry, grafting. And gonna so I got the supplies to graft. I got two rolls of grafting tape and a Equinox. I think they called it a rose, a flower cutting knife, but it's basically a grafting knife. It's just a thick backed, you know, um, pen knife with a nice long handle. Just oh, man, something about having the feeling of a really just quality pen knife in your hand seems so useful I, I told Jack if you were in a survival situation and you happen to have this thing in your pocket you are so stoked that that's the game changer tool look at this pigeon pea that I've grew as a as a shrub I'm trying to grow as a shrub just topped it going off Hey Jack, what you got there? She seems pretty content. <laughs> hey Blondie. Blondie gets picked up a lot because she's so sweet. She's still got some of that, uh, some of that down on her. No, oh, she can't what? find her. She can't find her friend. What's your fault? Cause you freaked out in my hand. Yeah. See what happens when you get freaked out, there, Blondie. Next thing you know, you're running away from the very thing you should be running towards. Isn't that true for all of us? Moral of the story: Don't get freaked out with the freaky chicken. But if you do, relax. Yeah. Happens to the best of us. Oh, right, you found your way. Welcome to the construction zone. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we can take that. Um, yeah, I saw a rat back here. That's a chicken byproduct for sure, but also the rabbits. So we got four leafed clover. They haven't eaten the four leafed clover. 
Oh, you are. Oh, look at that. Fonzie? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, when they're in the when they're on a mission and you pick them up, they just are, are saying, I want to keep doing what I was doing. Yeah, we handled them all a lot so that they get used to it. They're still chicken babies, like I was saying, but they're getting very used to us from a very early age. Oh, look. Yeah, so anyway, we saw a rat back here, so I, I keep this. I have a waterer down below and a waterer up above and a waterer over in the bunny run. I got waterers all over the place. It went nuts. Tractor supply. I but... like to go back there, and I don't like it because I don't. I can't get that back there. Oh, they go back in there. Yeah. Well, that's what because because there's so many bugs. Yeah. And I think the you know, I keep talking about this, but I, I'm really proud of this chicken coop I built. It's almost done. Ready to have a flock party? Got the mealworms. Their little chicken brains can't exactly work out how to get around the screen every time, but they get more confident in it every time. I would say that having lots of mealworms uh, doesn't hurt your chickens. It may make them love you in a level that <laughs> you will later regret because they'll follow you around everywhere in your yard under your feet. I kind of like to have a flock of chickens following me around. Yeah, so anyway, the way one of the ways I mitigate the rats, is, I've only seen one, but we've seen actually two snakes in the last week too, which freaked me out a little. Is to put a bucket over the waterer at night. Also don't want any other birds or animals drinking out of that stuff. Until I get the door finished. I've got the door built, but just not finished. Yeah, so we've also got some pigeon peas growing around here. This You can see this pot here. I grew this pigeon pea in that pot, and then I just transplanted it here. It's doing pretty well. I want to grow this in order to shade from the western sun lower in the sky. I'll protect, give some shade. We've already got this mulberry tree here. I'll be growing that over the coop as much as possible. And one of the things I'll do is actually bend these branches to go the, the direction I want while it's little. You like the waves? Black party. Yeah. They'd probably love that water. They forget to drink, too. There you go. Yeah, they're thirsty. Oh, look at Dumper. No. The Brad Pitt of rabbits. Dumper on each your backyard. Hey, Penelope. Warm ears. Warm ears. By the way, the bunnies and the chicks get along just fine. They just basically, I think, the first day they were getting to know each other, you know, Dumper got pecked lightly. And that was really about it. Now they just kind of coexist. Look at how beautiful this coat on this rabbit is getting. Holy mackerel.
see the longer hair and then it transitions into the short. We're all wondering if he'll get a second coat that he's still a baby too. They both are. Yeah, both are babies. Rabbits live to be about six years old, so they're super healthy and these are. See, we give them the mulberry sticks. They will never turn down an opportunity to play with you with the, with the sticks. Right, Penelope? So cute. Yeah, that's some first game is to bite up near your hand. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I need you to come back to the front. I need to... I yeah, I almost think we have too many of these mats in here, but they love to rearrange them. And in fact, I think they push them to the side because they like the feeling of the cold metal cage because it's actually much cooler. And by the way, caged rabbits in Florida, I, I would uh, say that very good way to go because it's plenty warm outside and they can, uh, and if you have this caged bottom like this, it's actually much cooler. You can feel it. It's like a, yeah, even when it's hot outside, the, the metal always seems to be cool. And we come out here and put ice cubes. It's supposed to get uh, 95 degrees. Here. I'm sure next week it's supposed to get 100. Oh, 100 degrees. So. Even Siri's black right up on the benches. Oh, no. You can turn that into a dirty bench, birds. But I just don't have uh, the desire to... Clean it? Nah, to push them off. No, you can leave them up there. You can leave them up there. Yeah, it's all right. I will I can always hose it off. I'll get that pressure cleaning inch. They're already getting in a nice pattern now. They go out and eat some bugs, explore around, get some veggies in. They ate a bunch of those, uh, bunch of those carrots. Yeah, they ate a lot of the carrots, and they also ate a lot of the uh, red beets. I want you to be my the leaves, beet greens. Mm, seriously. Yeah, and then they come back in. Just relax. I got them supplement too. Grit. This is granite. Really cheap. It's just crushed up granite. And they've been eating it. Yeah, they've been eating it. That goes in their an organ that they have that they use to digest food. So it's actually pretty important you provide it to them. But I think probably a small bag lasts just about a long time. Yeah, I did start to get fruit off of this strawberry tree recently already got a few happy to say this one is going to be a big big one just rained in rabbit manure i get get that rabbit manure that's under those cages into a bucket and spread out today that's one of the things get to go see my daughter's volleyball game excited for that super fun hey happiness eat them <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, shoot, ask a question. Stoked you're on the live stream. This is the first ever Saturday morning EB chat. It's intended to be conversational, so. Yeah. Nice. And then if it poops in my shirt, it would be... Yeah. Did you know, um, one of them already did on me. <laughs> See where my shorts are wet? No. Uh, they're, they're dried up already, but yeah. I had a, I was doing a flock party with all the mealworms, and uh, two of them jumped up on me, and I thought, oh, this is so cute. This is great. <laughs> and then a little bit later, I looked down and, yeah, realized. Where? Right on my leg. Right on my, the inside there of my leg. Got me, like, big time. But it washed right off these shorts. They're the fishing shorts, so they're like waterproof. Like but now I got it. Shirt on. <laughs> yeah. Some Time for new shorts, though, after the live stream. Do you back in <laughs> yeah, actually, they're, uh, the question was asked Will they eat the mangoes? I wasn't exactly asking. No, they don't seem to be interested yet. Yeah, you have to open it up. These Tommy Atkins mangoes are just. Incredible. 
like if you looked up mango in the encyclopedia or whatever, you'd find this. And look, they have this waxiness on them. See, it just starts to shine off. You can see some that naturally been shined off by other leaves, like this one up there. See how shiny that one is up in the tree? That one's been actually polished by those other leaves from that other from that uh, carambola tree, the starfruit tree right next to this. Look at how many mangoes. And you can see that despite the fact that this thing has gotten wind whipped ferociously. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't have any relationship advice, but... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I'd say good luck. You think chickens would eat starfruit? Uh, yeah, I think they could eat starfruit. Definitely mulberry. Like a yellow mango, or not mango, and yellow lemon. Yeah, did you see that the grapefruit tree dropped? Yeah, I saw that. It dropped both of its grapefruits. Smart. Stop. I'm glad that happened because it really is not it's, equipped it's to produce flat. fruit. It's past the point of looking pretty and now into the real. You want to eat raw? You will pack it through. It's got lots of shoots on it though. I pretty much uh, had a disastrous planting situation on this that hadn't been fully rooted into the pot I bought and when I transplanted it, it kind of bottom fell out and the roots were exposed and it was just gnarly. But a grapefruit tree is uh, big, you know, hardy enough to take that. It's a grapefruit chicken. Yeah, they're never gonna eat those grapefruits. Most people don't even eat grapefruits, but I love them. Check out this roselli. It's a red roselli. That's a hibiscus I grew from a seed. Got the seeds off of the internet. And it produces edible flower calyxes that taste like a cranberry. It's incredible. And I've had luck growing them with seeds. It's about the easiest thing possible to grow from a seed. And you can actually eat the leaves too. Or tangy. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at our areca. I'm just checking. I'm gonna always like to check on the areca palm, the new areca palm clump back here, which are a very complicated method for growing areca palm clumps. Is just to throw a seed, throw a bunch of seeds down, and walk away. Yeah, they've decimated the carrots. Chicken apocalypse 2021 come. Hey, there's almost. Occurring. They're crushing down all the carrots. Some cherry tomatoes too, that one. Lots of cherry tomatoes. Eh, not right now. But yeah, we should come out here and pick those tomatoes later. Stop. 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 She gets very relaxed. Yeah. Well, they say these particular chickens are very, very friendly, especially as they get older, the that they're a little bit timid when they're young, but that when they get older, they're the most loving, loyal chickens ever. Super affectionate chickens they're known to be, so. Yeah, when they're little babies, though, they really just want to get back to their friends. Oh, I've got tamarind trees growing. <laughs> Funny how that happened. I threw a bunch of seeds in a pot. They never grew. Chucked the, what was in the pot out here and they grew. So now I've got tons of sprouts. And I put this over here so they wouldn't get pecked by those chickens. But I planted a bunch of them too and we'll see if they make it. Looks like they're doing okay. But look at that, little tamarind trees. I don't know if they're sour or sweet tamarind because I've been eating both. 
but uh planted a bunch that one looks like a goner i'm gonna go back in and just keep planting them until i get a bunch that seem to be kind of making it and there's a nice moringa tree i grew from a seed you plan not to huh? blondie blondie's probably my favorite Blondie's your favorite? Why? Cause, because she's the most relaxed of them all? or yeah, probably. Yeah. So she's your top hen? Yeah. Yeah, they're starting to get that cool little crown. Got a lot of um, papaya trees. Yeah, the Hawaiian papayas are doing pretty well. That's a that's a Chinese tallow. This one right here. How is this growing? Although it looks like a papaya. How is this growing? How is this growing? Oh, whoa! What is that? Ah, that's a frangipani it's not even cutting. Connected. That's not even in soil, and it's sprouting flowers. It looks like the white one. Yeah. Maybe we ought to plant this. It's yeah. saying, please, plant me. Maybe right there. <laughs> well, where would you plant it? Yeah, Robolini. You know what I mean? And again, just threw down seeds. They sprouted. Put a shovel in. Put that shovel full of dirt into this pot and been watering it. And now we're going to have dwarf date palms pretty cool. Got to plant these aloe. Got some aloe cuttings, some good aloe vera. Well, another glorious morning. Time to get the day started. Hope you will too. If uh, you haven't already, maybe you consider making your backyard or your deck or whatever such capacity you have to grow food. I bet you put that in place. That's the big idea of the channel. And, um, I appreciate you jumping on for the live stream. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it, and also uh, subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Have a great day.